What is going on, Southwest? Welcome back to another episode of Scoreboard. This is your premier podcast for all things Southwest ISD athletics. I'm your man, Brandon Medina, and it is time. The day has come. We have both of our incredible coaches here. We have Coach Franco representing Southwest, and we have Coach Bruce representing Southwest Legacy. Gentlemen, how are we doing? Good. Doing great. Thanks for having us. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Listen, it's a, it, it's a big week. Um, obviously, you guys know that more than anybody. Last year, we talked about it. There were some big implications with uh, the district championship. This year, big implications with uh, playoff seating. How are you guys feeling kind of going into this week? We'll start with Coach Franco from Southwest High School. Well, when we decided, you know, when the district decided to put this game at the end, you kind of, you know, wonder what it's going to be like. And you're, you're hoping, you know, with the rivalry like this that, there's something to play for at the end, and it right. worked out that way. So, uh, super excited that you know it, it's it's gonna always be a big game for us. But now you add you know playoff seating and all that, and it's exactly how we wanted it to be. Perfect, Coach Bruce. What are you thinking? It's gonna be a great game. Um, it's like you're playing your brothers. You know, kids know each other, and and um, just looking forward to a good game and playing a clean game and and uh, representing our community well, and our kids representing our community in the right way. And after the game, you know, just We'll see what happens there after that. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, speaking of community, we have our uh, community service project right now. We're raising a lot of awesome um, food products and cans for our uh, Southwest ISD food pantry. I know we're just eclipsed, I think, the two to 3,000 mark of, uh, of cans. So big, a big shout out to all the schools uh, participating. But going into the game itself for Fire and Armor, we have Southwest at six and three total, six and one in district, riding a five game winning streak with each one differential, uh, each win differential being about two touchdowns. So really, really looking good coming off a 20 to 14 win over Sigadoa. Coach, talk us a little bit about your team's performance over Sigadoa. What did you see? What did you like? What are you looking forward to? Well, that game was, was very good for us. Uh, we knew going into it, it was going to be a matter of will versus will with them. You know, yep. they like to run the ball. We like to run the ball. Uh, they're very physical, you know, we're physical. So I was very pleased with how we responded and played for four quarters. You know, that felt like that was a real good quality win for us. You know, uh, that uh, is a culmination of us just getting better. You know, uh, we, we, we try to stay consistent with what we do, you know, and, and we preach that and just show up every day and every week get a little better. And I feel like we really have done that, you know, during this winning streak, we've been blessed to have it. And, uh, like I said, Sigaroa gave us everything we wanted, you know, and they're a good football team. You know, they've had a really successful year. And, you know, so we kind of talked them up in and, and, and that regard, and I thought our kids responded really well. Yeah, absolutely. And then, Coach Bruce, I know with Southwest Legacy right now, you guys are coming off of a 41-15 to victory over Laredo Nixon. You know, how did that feel? How did the kids perform? And, you know, what do you think you can kind of translate onto this week with Fire and Armor Bowl? Uh, just a faster start. Um, we struggled a little bit earlier uh, moving the ball. Defense is uh, tackling a couple of mistakes here and there. Second half, we came back and um, we hit all cylinders and we're able to put some points on the board. And we just need to be a little more consistent because it's a big game, you know. And uh, you know, you want the the ball to swing in your your way early and, and 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 try to get some points and try to have some good things happen. But we all know in a in a game like this, you know, it's going to be back and forth. And you know, we were talking about it the other day. Last year's game, I mean, that game could have went either. Either way, and yeah. there was opportunities, you know, on his side and on our side. You know, we're just very fortunate because we always said the last one with the ball is going to win, and uh, we just we just very fortunate last year to come away with it. And we just got to keep keep getting better and keep doing and what we do and play tight in football and and give ourselves a chance to uh, position to, to be successful. Yeah, and so you know, I want to take take a step back a little bit uh, from the district standings as it is. You know, Southwest is second. You guys are tied for third with the Titans with uh, Sigaroa. So with that, what have you seen as far as growth with your team, with your players, whether it's on the field, off the field, mentality, athleticism, what kind of, what have you seen and what players have stood out maybe that aren't in the stat sheet that we should know about from Southwest first and then we'll go on to legacy? Well, I think, you know, we had some kids step up, you know, up in the trenches is where we, you know, make our living as yep. a football team. And I thought our offensive line has, has really progressed. You know, we had some new faces on there. You know, our center, Vincent Fedoric, has done a great job, you know, even playing, you know, through some injury. Aiden Lavario is a guy that, you know, uh, was was with us last year but didn't get a lot of reps. And now, you know, he's the bulk. He's a starting tackle. He's done a phenomenal job. Jason Randa comes in and 
you know, solid player, but I guess lacking a lot of experience for those guys. And, you know, uh, Cordarian Northern's another kid that, you know, was on the team and was on JV last year and got, got a little bit of varsity reps. And I would say our biggest growth is there, you know, with our, with our offensive line. I got to give a lot of credit to Coach Ronnie Molina working with those guys and, you know, instilling toughness in those guys and just, you know, being patient. And all of us, you know, as a coaching staff, being patient as we knew there would be some growing pains early on. And, mm -hmm. You know, they've really progressed, you know, and, and done really well. And, you know, uh, unlike past seasons, we have played, you know, quite a bit of sophomores on varsity this year. And, you know, we started, you know, Tristan Quintanilla, Will Linebacker, all season long. And, you know, he's, you know, you know bright lights early on, yep. you know, down in Lockhart. And, you know, you see him now and he's flourished, you know. Um, you know, we've played Charles Stemley. You know, Tyson Dean has been big for us. You know, Jude Balderas. Just, just a bunch of young kids lacking experience and, you know, coaches, you know, just working with them week in and week out. And, and you know, they've improved every week. And that's all you can ask for as a coaching staff. Love it. And so, Coach Bruce, what about for the Titans side? Where have you guys really improved over the past year from last season? Well, we lost some uh, good seniors that we lost last year. And, and uh, first couple of weeks uh, was a learning experience um, for a lot of sophomores that had to step up and, and play varsity. Um, we have Marquis Collins, one of receivers, uh, Joseph Mario, uh, very young receivers, you know, made some young mistakes, but those guys are, are hitting all cylinders right now. Fabian Ramos, is a, he played uh, sparingly last year, you know, stepped into the starting role. He's made some great strides here. Um, you know, his game is a little bit different from what Tovar, Tovar's game was last year. So mm -hmm. uh, credit to the offensive coaches for, you know, putting a package together that fits uh, Fabian. Um, that fits our kids that we have. Jeremiah Sofuente is another one on defense. Uh, Juan De La Rosa, our defensive end. Uh, Nady Bada, secondary. Uh, RG, those are some kids that got didn't get very much playing time or got a lot of playing time on the JV last year um, that made some contrib that are making contributions this year. Uh, defensively, you know, they, we struggled a little bit early on, but the uh, past couple of weeks, this kid's been really playing and under, have a better understanding of the scheme of, w of what our expectations are. And just that, that experience from those games. And, you know, we needed those experience. We need to go through that to be where we are right now. Yeah. You know, and um, that, that plays big. And the, I think the kids are believing in what we're doing. And um, But we just got to keep getting better. You know, I, I always tell them uh, we got to play a clean game. You know, Coach, that's one thing Coach Tarvin used to say to our kids, and I still use that. You know, we got to play a clean game. We got to fly around. You know, we got to lean on each other. We got to stick together. And that's something I still preach to them. You know, I always say when that adversity hits, you know, that's when we got to stick together, especially being a young team. Yeah, absolutely. And then I know we have uh, our athletic director, Mr. Peter Wagner, in the building as well. And so I wanted to talk to you real quick about these two coaches. You know, what on your side, what's been um, what's been fun to see, you know, as far as growth from last year to this year with Southwest ISD Athletics? You know, last Fire and Armor was four district. This year, another big game. You know, how is it for you on your side as an athletic director seeing these two programs constantly growing and competing and, and uh, being competitive? Well, I, I think that it's a matter of how good our coaching staffs are led by these two because, you know, you take the Titans, for instance. We had two of the top players in the city and the top wide receiver um, statistically in the city last year. And, and they come back the next year – not necessarily rebuilding, but reloading. And they, as Coach Bruce said, they're often offensively and defensively finding a way to adapt what they do to the personnel that they have yep. and then making those kids successful, which is the whole idea of education, right, and teachers and everybody. You know, and the same goes for the Dragons, um, losing, some, losing some really good talent and uh, coming back with those young cats that are doing really well and, and, and growing. So... It's a matter of you can see the the quality of our leadership and 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 not just in football but in what they do on the character side of teaching our kids and the things that we really want to be about, but the consistency in that across the board and adapting and adjusting and and making putting our kids in a position to be successful year in and year out. You know, we talk about the 17 straight years that that Southwest has been going to the playoffs, which is probably one of the um, longest running right now in the city and then you take legacies on their own starting their own their own little uh run as well so southwest isd football and athletics is uh the consistency is what i think is is really neat and the quality of our leadership with these two 
gentlemen at both high schools. Wonderful. Yeah. And so now, you know, looking at this game, this is this is the fifth fire and armor now, right? This, this has been a long, a long running tradition now as far as uh, here in the community. We're taking it back to the beginning. We're taking it back to square square one where we were at Legacy at the first fire and armor. Southwest was victorious then last year. Um, it was at Southwest. Legacy won that one. What's the feeling, gentlemen, in the, in the locker room? Talk to me about what students are saying. We'll talk. We'll, we'll start at Legacy <clears throat> since you guys are at home. What's the feeling in the locker room for this game? Does it feel different? Does it feel a little bit more intense? What is the feeling there? Uh, the kids are excited. Um, you know, it's a it's it's a game that has a lot at stake for us. You know, it's and and the icing on the cake is is you know the, the trophy and the kids want to keep that trophy there. But you know, the kids like to get into that. We talk about trying to win the week. You know, we don't talk about 10 wins. We talk about winning the week. You know, we want to be 1-0 and this week. And then once we want to know, then we'll see where that heads, where that leads us to. So, you know, right now, the, the kids are go, they just want to get 1-0 and and try to keep that trophy there. And um, if we're, we're successful at that, and then we'll see what the, what's at stake for us after that. But the kids are excited. They're, they're working hard. Um, they're doing what we asked them to do. Um, even through all, this, all the activities that are going on, they're, they're, they're doing the best job they can to stay focused and, not only in the field, but in, uh, also in the classroom. And I got you. And so with you, Coach Franco, you heard Coach Bruce kind of talk about the excitement over there. Is it pretty similar at Southwest, or is it a little bit more of a uh, intensity being that they're coming off of last year having dropped that close game? Well, we're, we're just using the, the results of the Fire and Bowl to our advantage, and we started using that since last year. You yeah. know, when uh, the season's over and you're kind of, you know, regrouping and – we started using it right off the bat, you know, that we got to beat Legacy because the fact is we haven't beat them in three tries, you know, and, and, and you know, there's no way around it. And, you know, it hasn't been flukes. It hasn't been – it's been tough football games mm -hmm. that they've made the play you know, at the right time. You know, uh, we had them down 14 three years ago, and, you know, they sent it over time, and they, they scored a great touchdown, you know. Little homie, homie Flores, yeah. you know, scores on us. And, you know, we have a guy, we drop it, and, and over time they win. You know, we're in the Alamo Dome. You know, we're struggling. Uh, and uh, But we played a heck of a game that, that, that game. And, you know, Tovar makes a great play and scores in, in the last couple of seconds to win that game. And then last year, you know, they, they, they were a phenomenal football team. You know, mm -hmm. just accumulation of them opening up school and getting better and better. And that team was really, really good. And, you know, we were really proud that we even hung with them. But, you know, we had a chance to win. And But they just make plays, you know. And uh, um, so we started using that as motivation. So, um you know, and it brings us to this year, and, and we just use that. That's our fuel. Like, hey, we got to get that trophy back, you know. Yeah. And, and and it's not like, you know, beating somebody that's that's not worthy. They're very worthy, and they're very well coached, you know, and they've gotten better. And, and um, so whenever we need a little extra, you know, pep in our step, we just we just talk about beating Legacy right now. And, and you know, and so it's been good. It's been good. It's a little different, you know. Uh, it's exciting, and, and uh, you add everything with it then you know we're our kids are really excited to play this game you know they want to win just like their kids want to do and uh, um, there's no lack of motiva uh, motivation in this game we're, yeah. we're ready to go and you know and everybody's ready to go yeah and I know you know coming back obviously me being uh, the youngest here at the at, at, at the media team in the district I've actually had the pleasure of of, of being under you guys at some point in, in, in my career going with you guys and so with that um, you know what does this mean to you all as coaches so flipping the script from students to coaches, um, I know you guys are good friends, um, at least here, right? It's all, it's all, it's all casual here. But I mean, looking at it as coaches, does this game have a different feel? Or is it just another game, another week for for you, Coach Franco at Southwest and the Oklahoma well, Legacy. Well, you know, uh, I know what Coach Bruce is driving, so when he goes out there, you might, you know, have to replace a tire or something, <laughs> so he makes it back, you know, in time for his meetings. But you know, we're all sitting here and we're pretty, you know, uptight right now. But we are. You know, because uh, we know we got to act the part in football coaches, but we are good friends and we laugh and, and we have a good time. And, uh, you know, I'll start with this. You know, when I got here 10 years ago, Coach Bruce was, was one of our – was a coach here, and he welcomed me with open arms. You know, we became good friends. I always had a lot of respect for him, you know, a complete stranger. He was from the San Antonio area. I wasn't. And, you know, he accepted me right in, you know, kind of taught me the ropes. And, you know, you know, we just felt like he knew me forever. So he's a really good man, really good friend, one of my mentors. And then uh, – when Legacy opened, you know, there's a lot of coaches that went over there that worked with us. And we worked not only worked with us for one or two years, you know, yeah, quite some time. time under Coach Wagner. And we had very successful football seasons and we had some great times, you know, under Coach Wagner. He did a good job of the culture of creating within the coaching staff. So, you know, when Legacy first opened, we knew a ton of those coaches over there and, and, and it was always fun. You know, that's changing a little bit. I think I know, you know, I know Coach Bruce. I know, you know, Coach Flores, Camel's over there, Co Coach Black. But 
I don't know all of them, you know, yeah. and there's, there's going to be a point in time where the Southwest coaches and the, and the legacy coaches don't have much of a history, but we still do. And, and we look back on those times with, with a lot of good memories and, you know, and uh, uh, the only thing we want to do is win that game on the field. We want to win that game so bad. You know, like I said, you know, we, we're ready for the trophy to come home and, and we're motivated to do that, you know, and, and for, you know, three and a half hours, you know, uh, we're going to try to beat each other and do everything we can, but we really are good friends and, you know, in the off season we talk and, you know, we laugh and, and, you know, bounce ideas off of us, you know, mm -hmm. and, and so, you know, it's a lot of mutual respect, you know, that I have for those guys. Yeah. You know, you speak about the coaching staff. I think what's interesting for me too now is, um, you know, being in, in, into my mid to late twenties now, a lot of the people I played with are now coaches on your respective staffs. And so people that you coached mm -hmm. have now come back in um, to kind of give back to the, to the students that you guys have. So with that, Going to you, Coach Bruce, does it – what does this game mean to you? You heard Coach Franco kind of for yourself. Now, what, what does this game mean to you? Is it different or is it just another game that you said win in the week? Well, we want to win the week, of course, but it, it's it's a little different. Um, it's, it's some, of course, some things at stake. And I have a lot of respect for Coach Franco Coach, uh, and, his, and his staff. And uh, like he said, we are friends. And, and you know, I, I consider him like a brother. And if he needs something, I, I'll do it. Um, but during that game, you know, I want to beat him, you know, and, and just like I will with my own brother. You know, when we play, you know, it's, the line is drawn. Like, I, you know, I want to win just like he does. And um, our kids, and I told, I told our kids, you know, we got to play that clean game and, and, and represent our community and give everything we got. And that scoreboard will always take care of itself. If you do right, that scoreboard will take care of itself. And that's our goal, to be 1-0 and – uh, represent our community and represent our school in, in the right way and 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 be respectful you know during that game and um, no matter what the officials call uh, you know we, we just got to play Titan football and uh, but it does mean a lot um, you know keeping that trophy there those kids love that trophy you know love to sit it and, and I know during the spring we had middle schools there and they're begging me to get it out of trophy case and <laughs> And here I go getting it and so they can stand it up or we have some type of event, you know, they want me to go get it, so I do. And, um, you know, they want to keep it there. And um, But they, I told them they're going to have to work for it. They're not going to – Southwest ain't going to give it to them. You know, I told them the other day, I said, you got coaches that worked over there. You know, I said myself and Coach Flores, Coach Black, and some of them knew, some of them didn't know. And and I said, when I worked there, I said, it was – we we were physical. And you have to play a physical ball game. Mm -hmm. And um, it, it's – you know that's what that's what Southwest does. They're very physical and and uh, and like you said, I do have coaches on my staff. And you know, I I said you can go ask that guy and you go ask that guy, Coach Cooper there and Coach Della Rosa. Yep. You know, there's the guys that are that have been there that's seen uh, the type of style of football that Southwest plays. And I said it's going to be a very physical game, and you're going to have to give everything you got. And I said the last game we played, we just got very fortunate. We were the last one with the football because I guarantee there's more time. You know that game could have easily swung his way, yeah. and um, so it's it, it, it's a backyard brawl. And um, you know I'm looking forward to a great game. And and um, you know like Coach said, I'm like I'll be honest, I'm like geared up. If we can play right now, I play right now. But <laughs> I am. It, it's I'm seriously. Coach, I just Coach Bruce fired up. Yeah, I am. <laughs> I, I do. Like he comes like Coach Wagner call we talk and stuff, and I'm like I'm like let's go now. Yeah. You know, so you know, uh, to piggyback on what coach said, coach said, you know, uh, we've played a ton of games over the years, and yeah. I couldn't, I can't remember what happened three years ago in yeah. in any of the other nine games. But as you can see, I can pretty much speak verbatim of what happened in in the Fire and Armor Bowl the last yeah. three years. So yeah. those of you that say that game doesn't really mean anything, yeah. you know, that that kind of explains answers your questions. For Absolutely, that, that you know, I know players from those games, yeah. and you know, it's it's we follow those guys year round, so uh, we're ready to go. Yeah, and I think what's interesting too is a lot of your players you know, uh, went to school with each other before things changed with legacy and it was opened up. It's so a lot of your players know each other very well. So before we go, I wanted to speak just a, f a few players. Let's talk about Brian Lisama, right? The guy from Southwest. I mean, absolutely talented stud running back. Um, as far as, uh, the entire game script almost goes through him. And, and, and when you look at a guy that has talent like that, he can break off a big play at any moment. Talk about his work ethic and what that means to the team. Well, one of the things about Southwest, you know, we're a run-heavy team, and we've yep. had those running backs. You know, you look a couple of years ago, Andre Mitchell, and then followed by, you know, Jake Friesen, Han, and then so who was the next big guy? And he told me right after the season, he's like, Coach, I got you, you know. And I was like, okay, cool. And then, you know, I, I noticed right on his work ethic, he was in the weight room, 
you know, along with those guys that you, you hear, you know, that drive our team, you know, Polo Salazar, and Blake Chester and those guys, they just lived in the weight room. And he kept on saying, Coach, I got you. I'm going to surprise you. I'm going to surprise you. You know, and, uh, um, you know, you, you look at Brian and, I, and, you know, even this practice this morning and he's out there getting reps like – He's still, you know, trying to prove how good he is. And we all know he's great and how hard he plays. And, and so he's just a coach's dream. You know, he, he puts his mind to something and he works at it. And he really makes the others around him better just by his personality. You can coach him hard. You know, you can get onto him. You can correct him. And he's a yes, sir, yes, sir kind of guy. That, you know, doesn't say much. But, you know, his actions just, just speak for all of us about how what it takes to be a football player, what it takes to be successful, period, in everyday life is – Put your mind into something, work at it, commit to it, take coaching, you know, take, you know, criticism, you know, and uh, be humble about it, you know, and uh, um, that's what you get. It's just a phenomenal young man. He's had a, a phenomenal football season. He is super tough and just, you know, 36 carries, you know, I mean, uh, 36 carries last game, 168 yards. Workhorse. Just, you know, and, and not only, they're not, they weren't, you know, they weren't pretty carries, you know. Sigurdo was really tough and those linebackers were coming downhill and, you know, and, not once that he ever asked to get out of the game and you know he brought us home and and you know we look forward to continuing you know in this game and then in the playoffs you know we look forward to see you know what what that number can get to with yeah. him and then on the legacy side i mean fabian ramos i mean you're looking at it i have 286 yards per game the guy's um very talented when you talk about a player like that who can pass who can run who can make moves on the offensive side of the ball um, as well as both of you guys respectively having very evenly matched defenses. You mentioned Blake Chester and Polo Salazar. I know over here you have Fabian Salazar and Juan De La Rosa, but about those two offensive juggernauts, um, Fabian Ramos, you know, talk a little bit about his work ethic and what that means to the team. Fabian's a great kid. He works hard. Um, he's played a lot of football, you know, not only for the school, but outside the school. And so he has a lot of experience he brings to the table. And, you know, one thing I do give him credit for, you know, when the couple of years he had Tovar here, you know, him and Tovar talked a lot. And um, I remember a situation we had last year when Del Rio and uh, Tovar goes down and uh, and, we, and Fabian was, he was up and he uh, he got us out of that game and won that game. You know, he did exactly what we asked him to do and um, played his style of game. And it was a little different from uh, Cesar, and, uh, but he was able to get us out of the game. And uh, like I said, kudos to Coach uh, Flores and his staff. And, you know, they put a package together that fits him and uh, that 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 complements him and and uh, Fernando Flores, our running back. You know those those two guys together and uh, Jeremiah Sofuentes, Those guys, you know, they understand what their scheme is and, and their role, and they are able to execute that role with you know with Fabian and they understand each other and they're on the same page. And um, but he he's a, he's a hard worker and he does exactly what we ask him to do. And you know he's the one that leads the team. You know he he'll he'll he's not scared to speak up and. Uh, but he does a good job of that for us, kind of keeping that offense together for us. He, even you know, even you know, helps the defense, encourage the defense on the sideline. So that, I appreciate that about him. But he's played a lot of football, and you know, he's one of those guys that love football. And you know, he don't want to be hurt, and and um, he's always there, you know, to support the the team. Yeah. Well, I'll, listen, I'll, I'll let you guys get going. As my last question to both of you, and we'll end it on on a, on a high note, on a good note. Both of you guys I know watch a lot of film. You guys are definitely um, intrigued by this matchup. You can hear it. You can feel it in this room right now. We'll start with uh, Coach Bruce. What do you think is the best part of Southwest's game that you know uh, you guys need to be look on the lookout for with, with this fire and armor this year? A physical. A physical. If you're not physical back, you know, that's – you know, Coach Tarvin used to say some things are demoralizing. Um, you know, when – the power offense that they run, if you're not physical, you're not matching that physicality, you know, that's, that's not good. And, um, and your coaches that have been around, you know what it looks like. Mm -hmm. You know, you can see in that other team's eyes if somebody's running right at you and you have no answer to that. And uh, we got to be physical. We got to fly around and, you know, we got we to gotta get some stops and, and uh, defensively and get offensive ball and try to get points. But they're very physical and that's – to me, been a trademark of of Southwest football is they're they're a very physical team and and they go run right at you and we got to be able to stop that and try to you know do the best job we can to get our offense the ball and and uh, and like I said they're a very well coached team and and uh, you know we just got to try to control that and, and get our offense the ball. I got you now, Coach Franco, and it's on a high note. What are you what are you thinking? What are you zeroing in on when it comes to the legacy tie-ins to get that trophy back to Southwest? 
Well, it's funny that you asked that question that way. What are we zeroing in on? Because I think they're a complete football team and you really can't zero in on them. You know, uh, they run the ball well between the tackles, really good offensive line, good size. But, you know, they got a couple of things, you know, they can open it up and they can beat you multiple ways. And, you know, when you start watching film, like Coach said, and they get off to a slow start, they go to other things that they can do to get them going. They've thrown the ball really well the last couple of games, and, and they're a balanced football team. And then defensively, man, they, they tackle, they attack. You have to block all 11. There's no weaknesses there. Um, and what I said earlier was, was in our prior matchups that it hasn't been onside kicks. It hasn't been trick plays. It hasn't been turnovers. It hasn't been penalties. They've been really clean, tough-nosed football games that – the winner was just a better football team. And, and I, I don't even know if it was skill so much at times. It's just, you know, two football teams with, with good will that, that really want to get after it. And that's what we see with these guys, you know. Uh, you're going to have to beat them. You're gonna, and you're going to have to beat them in all three phases of the game and then, um, you know, not take any plays off and beat them for four quarters. And like, like Coach said, you know, those guys over there, I mean, I have a huge respect for Coach, you know. You know, i got to give a shout-out to my guy, Homer Flores, over there what he does for kids and how he gets that offensive line going, ready to go. Um, it's, it's just very special. So we look forward to the challenge, you know, good, you know, get your popcorn ready and, and, <laughs> and, and, you know, don't expect to leave early. Don't expect to be traffic. Cause you know, it's going to come down to, to the wire and, and not one team's going to back down. And uh, you know, it's, it's, they're an impressive team to watch. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, we're, we're, we're excited over here on our side. I look at it. I'm excited. It's gonna be a great and grinded out kind of game. We know that, do not miss it. This is going to be at Southwest Legacy on Friday, November 4th uh, for, at 7 p.m. We're going to have Fan Fest out there, some taco trucks and uh, some music, games, all that good stuff there at 5.30. Um, and the action kicks off at 7. So we have a lot of surprises and stuff. Um, weather is going to be uh, something to look out for, but we're really excited. We're playing, like these guys said, rain or shine. They're, they're excited to go in and uh, jump in the trenches. So. That's going to do it for us, gentlemen. Thank you very much, Coach Franco. I appreciate it. Coach Bruce, thank you guys for making the trip out of talk. I know me and Coach Wagner have been talking about this for a while, and we're excited. I'm sure um, there might be a little bit of trash talk or some banter between you guys leading up to it, hopefully, but we'll keep that on the side. I know we also wanted to recognize a few of our students who have uh, some great things to celebrate, especially in athletics. Uh, Wagner, if you want to lead that off for volleyball and cross-country. So we, we got two things, and I'll just shoot it to these guys. But uh, Saturday, um, we got two, two Titans – going to the to the state cross country meet and as we talked about in the last couple of weeks um the first time in SWISD history that are they're doing that so that they run on Saturday at 10 and 10:40 Alicia Galvan and uh and Anthony, Anthony Zapata and Anthony Zapata and then um over at Southwest uh, the volleyball team won the first by district championship since 2009 yesterday oh, man. and they play uh Thursday uh tonight i guess at um at buta at buta johnson high school at seven o'clock so you know give these guys a chance to say what's up to those guys yeah i'd like to give a huge congratulations to coach Catherine cortez and her staff and the dragon volleyball team they were able to head over to blossom athletic center last night and beat highlands in three games and they those girls have played really well and it's been it's been fun to watch those those teams compete and you know uh just phenomenal we wish them the best and we're excited for them you know, they got the gold ball, you know, and that's what, you know, it's that time of year for Coach Bruce and I, and, you know, we're using Dragon Volleyball as our motivation. So a big shout out to those kids and Coach Cortez and her staff for, for you know, uh, winning by district. First one since 2009. We're super proud of them. Nice. For us at Legacy, uh, Anthony and Alicia are great runners. Uh, both are very young, um, qualified for the regionals. Now they're going to state, and that's the first time uh, in a while, probably in the district, and first time at Legacy. And, um, and both of those kids are really good kids. And if you didn't know them, because they, they don't really say a word, and Anthony's one of those kids that uh, that's really helpful. And, and Alicia, too, they're, they help the other they're young runners, and they're great examples. And Coach Arguello and Coach Jessica Hall are the cross-country coach, and they do a good job with our, with our kids. And um, I know they're looking forward to running in state. And um, when I was talking to Alicia yesterday, she said she's very nervous, and I said, that's a good thing. You know, that's going to help. That's going to be your drive. So just keep working hard. and. Uh, you know, run, try to run as fast as you can. So, yeah, yeah I was excited for him. Sounds like Anthony Zabata needs to be returning kicks over there at Legacy <laughs> as well. I mean, if, 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 if there's it was a spot, like a 500 yard yeah. field, we'd be all right. <laughs> if there's a spot, that's what I'm saying. But, well, big congratulations to both um, Anthony and is it, uh, Alicia. Alicia over there at Legacy. Um, it is the first time in state. You know, we went back, 
decades on decades with uh, athletic director Peter Wagner about coaches for uh, cross country. This is the first time ever, so a big, big congratulations to them. And then, of course, with volleyball, there's a huge history. Olympians have come and gone here at Southwest and another by district championship to add to the trophy case uh, since 2009. So a big congratulations um, to both programs, both coaches, and all the students involved. Uh, another great accolade for this great district and great time to be uh, a Southwest fan. And this has been another episode of Scoreboard. I am Brandon Medina for Coach Franco, Coach Bruce, and your athletic director, Peter Wagner. We want to say thank you. And once again, like always, we are Southwest. <laughs>